from WFLA TV. Eight on your side. This is News Watch 8. With Bob Height and Gail Searin, meteorologist David Grant's forecast, and Chris Thomas on sports. And now, News Watch 8 at 11. It's last call at Cheers. You've just seen the final episode in the bar where everybody knows your name. And now the stars of Cheers are preparing for a late night. They'll appear live from Boston on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, immediately following News Watch 8. Good evening, everyone. I'm Gail Searin. And I'm Bob Hyde. And tonight we all bellied up. It was the end of an era. For 11 years, Sam and Carla, Norm and Cliff, Woody and Rebecca and Diane were part of that favorite neighborhood bar crowd who came into our living rooms every Thursday night. Now it's over, but certainly not forgotten. Newswatch ace Jeff Patterson is in the middle of one going-away party. Jeff, what an ending, huh? It sure was, Bob. I am at Beef O'Brady's on South McDillon. You know, this was just one of those major television events. Uh, of course, we know it was a major television event because Channel 8 had T-shirts printed up saying it was Cheers Final Night. But, you know, if you're a fan of the show, this is one of those nights you will always remember the answer to the question, where were you for the final episode of Cheers? Everybody may know the names of all of the characters in Cheers, but not everybody knows the words to the song. At Bleachers tonight in St. Petersburg, Cheers fans pack the place. What do you think about tonight being the last episode? I'm going to miss it. I really enjoy it. I've been to Cheers in the Boston. This may not be Boston, but in bars all across America tonight, everyone was comparing their friends to characters they have come to know and love from 11 years of Cheers. Would, would you describe him more of a, as a cliff or is he more of a norm? <laughs> I'm an accountant. What the hell do you expect? In some bars, they held Cheers look-alike contests. But tonight, we found our own Norm. Does it appear to you that he could audition as, like, the young Norm? Oh, He's been told that a I don't want to be Norm. I want to watch Norm. Well, he may not want to be Norm, but many of the people at Bleachers tonight came to try and win a piece of Cheers history. W101 Radio was giving away Norm's bar stool. A real bar stool used on the set of Cheers. While most television sets in America were tuned to Cheers tonight, there were some holdouts. People who decided to do something other than watch television. Why aren't you watching Cheers? I decided to do something a little bit more productive and strenuous. Can you imagine that? Somebody golfing while the final episode of Cheers was on. They have posters made up. This was a big TV event. But I'm standing here trying to figure out, you know, who, who would I be like in the show? Because I'm not Norm. I don't have the gut. I'm not Cliff Clavin because I haven't lived at home in 15 years. And I'm certainly not Sam Malone because I don't have a little black book and I haven't had a date in three months. So I don't know. Well, well then who are you? Well, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, we got, we got one other fan here. <laughs> Everybody was watching the final episode of Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, I wouldn't miss it on WFLA TV. There you go. Thank you, Mr. President. And Jeff Patterson reporting live from FIFA Brady's in Tampa. Oh, the final Cheers extravaganza happened all over the Bay Area tonight as we've seen. This was the wild and crazy scene at Goodfellas Night Spot in Hillsborough County. The entire bar toasted cheers, and look who showed up, Norm. No, I'm not the New York, go away. I'm going to be the rest of the gang will be here in a little while. we got a lot of traveling to do. It wasn't quite as rowdy at the Mad Dogs and Englishmen pub in Tampa. Pe people gathered there to watch the show and play a Cheers trivia game. The one who knew all of the answers won a free dinner. And no place was the Cheers hoopla greater than in Boston. Cheers cast members took places of honor at an unusual joint session of the Massachusetts House and Senate. 
Governor William Weld presented each of the actors with a very special proclamation. Remember what they brought to that city. And whereas this historic television series was set in the celebrated city of Boston in the great Commonwealth of Massachusetts, now therefore, I, William F. Weld, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim May 20th, 1993 as Cheers Day in Massachusetts. People in Boston were able to watch tonight's final episode on bleachers set up on Beacon Street and on Boston Common. What a great day it has been there. Sure has. Up next on Newswatch 8, we will have some of our local news activities in the Bay Area. And stick around, because later in the newscast, we will go live to Boston to the Bull and Finch Pub, the inspiration for the Cheers Bar. We'll be joining Diane Perker live, who is in the middle of the celebration tonight. And later still, we'll show you all 11 years of Cheers condensed into little more than a minute. You won't want to miss it. Well, there's a bite in that Boston air tonight, but we'll be cheering the forecast when you hear it in just a few minutes. And tonight's cash three numbers, 141, play four, 2159. Trouble's all the same. You want to be where everybody knows your name. You want to go where people know. People all are the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. show on the road. This Thursday night, we take the entire show to Boston for a live broadcast from the actual Cheers bar. Hey, Branford, give me a hand with this, will you? Then stick around for Late Night with LL Cool J and actor Bob Hoskins. All tonight. Uh, better get moving, Jay. about Cheers later, but for some local news. Virginia Bates is known as the Cat Lady, but tomorrow she'll learn whether Hillsborough County will allow her to care for even one pet, never mind the 77 kittens she used to have. The Cat Lady supporters marched outside the Hillsborough County Courthouse this afternoon. The County Animal Service investigators say in the past, Mrs. Bates has cared for too many cats, and so the animals suffer from neglect. Many of her neighbors agree. Mrs. Bates believes her individual rights and those of her pets are being trampled. Judge Dick Greco will make his ruling on the cat lady at noon tomorrow. A mounted search for a missing Hillsborough mother and son fails to turn up any new evidence tonight. 18-year-old Bonnie Degas and her five-month-old son Jeremy disappeared April 29th. Today, a sheriff's posse searched wooded areas near Bonnie's South Hillsborough County home and woods near South Brandon Shopping Center where her locked van was discovered. Investigators urge anyone with information about the missing mom and baby to call immediately. America's top military leaders flew to the Bay Area today honoring one general who is retiring and another who is taking on a very important new job. Defense Secretary Les Aspen and Joint Chiefs Chairman Colin Powell came to McDill Air Force Base for the change of command at Special Operations. General Carl Steiner is retiring after commanding the Green Berets, Army Rangers, Navy SEALs, and Special Air Force units through Desert Storm in Somalia. General Wayne Downing is taking over Special Ops. He has long experience with the Special Commando units he'll command. General Steiner plans to retire here in the Tampa Bay area. President Clinton let some of the air out of voter apathy today as he inked his name to the Motor Voter Bill. New voters will now be able to register by mail or when they get their driver's licenses or at a variety of federal, state, and local government offices. Mr. Clinton says now there's no longer any excuse to stay on the sidelines of democracy. Seventy-two of the best educators in our state gathered tonight in Orlando to find out who would be this year's Teacher of the Year. And the spotlight shown on Hillsborough County's Jerry Murray, a science teacher at Adams Junior High. He was singled out as the best of the best and offered his philosophy on education. I have one message. The education experience has no higher purpose than preparing people to lead personally fulfilling and responsible lives. These motivational experiences should help students to develop the understanding and habits of mind that they need to become compassionate human beings, able to think for themselves and to face life head on. 
Tonight's honor also carried with it a $10,000 check. Our very best to you, Mr. Murray, and congratulations. I know his students will be very proud of him. It'd be nice if all of our teachers could get a bonus like that. It'd be nice. There's lots more cheers when we come back, but first, David Grant has a cheery forecast. And we'll take you live to Boston for the final tribute to Cheers cast and crew members. Game three in the Montreal Islanders series tonight. Chris has the highlights later in sports. Sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Residuals, residuals, yeah. residuals. But remember, no matter where you see it in the future, remember where you saw it first, first right? right. Yeah. I guess 300. I was a little high, 179. Uh, well, you well know. someday, perhaps. <laughs> exactly. Maybe so. Well, Boston's weather is 51 degrees right now. It's miserable. It's been cloudy all day, been rain all day. It'll drop to about 45 tonight. Yikes. So it makes us appreciate where we are tonight. Today's high was in the 80s, 84. It rose uh, 20 degrees from the morning low of 64. And currently, we're at 72. Skies are clear. Winds are from the northwest at 6, and the humidities are going to be a little lower for a couple of days. 29.82, rising barometric pressure reading. At uh, Boston, it was 52 degrees today. That was the high. It was 66 at Nashville, Muskogee, Oklahoma, 69 degrees. And we had a 66 at Goodland, Kansas, and 67 up there at Bismarck, North Dakota. 58 in the uh, Chicago area, and also 57 real close at uh, Duluth. All that whole area was quite cool. 90 at West Palm today, 83 at Beaumont, Texas, and we got into the 90s and the 100s in the desert southwest. Finally, we got up to Boise, Idaho. It was 81 degrees, and we had some mild readings until get, till you get out on the coast. Uh, the moisture is just easing out, leaving the east coast, leaving us with pretty dry air to the north of us. Showers and thunderstorms all along this Rocky Mountain area, which, by the way, will redevelop again for tomorrow, as well as some showers further England, inland, and there is some rain out on the coast. The cooler air is sweeping on southward, and it'll be cooler than normal in Tallahassee and Jacksonville, Atlanta, Birmingham, and even some of the area very close to us for a couple of days. The overnight lows tonight. 40s if you're going to be in Birmingham or Atlanta, Clayton, Georgia, or Nashville, Chattanooga, all through their 50s and 60s for the state here. Local reports for tomorrow morning are going to look like this. 59 in Inverness, 50, 58 in Inverness, rather, 59 in Brooksville, your 60s down into Port Charlotte. The highs for the day, 70s to the north, 80s for us, but just barely, just barely, because we're going to be generally around upper 70s and low 80s. Now, the winds will be out of the northwest to north at 10 to 15 knots. Pretty good boating weather for a couple of days, by the way. Uh, two to four foot seas, 79 in Gulf and also in Tampa Bay. Our tides at the Pier at St. Pete, a 3.57 morning tide. Then a low tide later on after sunrise. 147 is a high tide in the afternoon. Last tide is a low tide at 940. Sunrise at 6.38 in the morning and 8.16 in the sunset. Beautiful overnight. No showers in our area at all. 63 degrees should be the overnight low. Last night it was 64 and Saturday morning is going to be still cooler. 83 will be the high in the afternoon. It uh, just perfect. They're just perfect. A few scattered clouds, and that's it. The next five days, in fact, Saturday, 60 in the morning, but there'll be some readings right around all the Tampa Bay area, anywhere from 54, 55 to about 60. So you can see there is a nice cooling trend. Sunday, a nice day in spite of the occasional thunder shower. Monday and Tuesday, we stand a much better chance of rain than we do over the weekend or tomorrow. Okay. Thanks, David. Thanks. The Tampa Coliseum group is history, but the hope for a new arena is still alive. The Lightning still looking for a new home. Now they'll need new partners. Chris has that story next in sports. And don't go to bed just yet. We'll look back on 11 hilarious, fun-filled, frantic years of a sitcom called Making Cheers. Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Nice work if you can get it. Sure is. We well, you know nowhere was Cheers' last call more keenly watched than in the city where the real bar is located. The send-off party rivaling the Super Bowl wraps up tonight in Boston, and that is where we find News Watch 8's Diane Perkmer to tell us what was going on tonight as cast and crew bid farewell in person. Diane? 
Right now it's getting a little crazy, Bob, but really all night long anticipation and getting has characterized the mood here. The crowd even sang the theme song to Cheers as the show began. But it's also clear everyone sensed an underlying bittersweetness about the finale to a phenomenon. That may be why so many people here in Boston chose to become part of history, history that tra transcends television and really melds with our popular culture now. Thousands showed up at Boston's Bull and Finch pub to the, the real cheers, by the way, to bid farewell and to catch a glimpse of the stars. They caused quite a stir here with a splashy arrival that looked and felt like a big-time award ceremony. The final cast party here, however, was more of a tip of the hat to Boston. The actors only stayed briefly at the party before watching the final episode in private. But before leaving, they reflected on what this night means after so many years together. Well, basically what we did for 11 years is hang out with seven of our close, seven or eight of our closest friends and make each other laugh all day. So I get to have this little photo album of memory. I got my camera here too. I'm taking pictures from the celebrity's perspective. I used to run and just run into people who said, you got to fix that gap in your teeth and you're never going to work. You know what I mean? I never, I don't know. I was hoping to maybe do regional theater, you know, if, if I was lucky. But, you know, this is amazing. Now, two stars couldn't make it tonight. Uh, Shelley Long is working in California. Kirstie Alley is filming a movie in Canada. And truthfully, the star that probably spent the most amount of time working with the public and getting the crowd's reaction isn't even connected to Cheers. Jay Leno is getting ready to uh, perform the Tonight Show live right behind me. That's one of the reasons why things are getting crazy around here. They're trying to get the crowd all excited. That show begins in just a couple of minutes right here from the Bull and Finch Pub in Boston. Back to you. Well, I guess Carla probably didn't mind that Diane couldn't make it tonight, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it has been a lot of fun for you, Diane. Have you been able to sort of get down, or you've been having to work too hard? <laughs> I've been kind of working all night. You know, it was very difficult, as you can see by the crowd, it's very difficult to get close. There's probably, at, at early on, probably about 10,000 people. It looks like it swelled to about 50,000. I think this is about as close as I'm going to get. Tomorrow's going to be a long work day for a lot of those folks. There's been a lot of partying, but there's a little bit of sadness. I think everybody feels very nostalgic about the passing of this program. It's, it's meant a lot really to us here at Channel 8, and I know that Diane's been a big fan of it, too, over the years. You're a huge fan of this program, aren't you? I love this show, and it really, you know, it means something to me to see it end after all these years, because I really feel like these people are people we know. Well, Diane, the work day is officially over for you, I do believe. Go and try and have a little bit of fun anyway. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. And the workday continues now for Mr. Chris Thomas, who's Norm. Been, uh, Norm, yeah, our our version of Norm, right, right here little, on the corner, skinnier. The milk bone of what? That's yeah, so just uh, <laughs> the dog eat dog world, and uh, my yeah, whatever. Yeah, right. Milk, milk bone <laughs> <under> <laughs> that's right. That's right. I might better just leave that one alone. Yeah, and my ties. I'd like to be here them. tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Uh, here we go. Some interesting stuff about the Coliseum. After two and a half years of promises upon promises. Deadline extensions upon deadline extensions and assurances that a state-of-the-art arena would rise on the property south of Tampa Stadium. It officially today fell apart. The group known as Tampa Coliseum Incorporated is dead. The chief executive officers of TCI ran out of time, ran out of money, and then ran straight into bankruptcy court. Their petition for protection from creditors and a chance for financial reorganization was denied today in bankruptcy court. Can civil lawsuits be far behind? The TCI arena is dead, but the site remains as a viable one, perhaps the only one, that will accommodate a relatively swift conclusion to the Tampa Bay Lightning's need for a new building. If the Lightning cannot be assured of moving into a new building by 1996, then Tampa Bay can't be assured of having this team stay here much beyond that. In other words, there is much to do. Well, guess who in a tie game tonight? Charles Barkley shoots over David Robinson, and the Suns lead the Spurs by 2, 102 to 100. Time for one more shot, and it's Robinson who tries it, but rookie Oliver Miller stuffs him, and the Suns win and move to the Western Conference Finals, 102 to 100. The other game tied at 54 there in the third period. No score tonight until Pierre Turgeon, in on right wing, knocks it in the net for a 1-0 Islanders lead over Montreal. But the Canadians fought back, and the tying goal is a study in perseverance. Montreal simply swarmed the net and finally overwhelmed Glenn Healy 
bang. Then in overtime, uh, Guy Charbonneau uh, got the feed and his shot ricocheted off uh, Healy's pad into the net. There it is for the game winner in overtime. Montreal 2-1 to one to go up three games to none in the series. Great game. Now the baseball. A scoreless game in Sarasota tonight until this. A lazy fly ball on the shallow right field. A collision. And the Lake Wales second baseman hangs on to the ball. But his throw isn't in time to home, and Jesuit has a 1-0 lead. Troy Carrasco trying to put an exclamation point on a great career at Jesuit. Does a nice job of getting the runner on a sacrifice attempt. But Lake Wales comes up with three in the seventh inning and wins the game 3-2. Ray Langford, no trouble figuring out that pitch. The Cardinals jumped to an early lead on the Cubs tonight. And then bad went to worse as Tony Pena unloaded the bases with a drive past Mark Grace into the right field corner. And Harry Carey was short of a lot of holy cows tonight. After three straight losses in L.A., things didn't get any better today for the Reds in San Francisco. Kurt Manwaring doubles in Willie McGee. It's 3-1 Giants. And then it became 4-1 Giants when Darren Lewis singled in Manwaring. The Reds lose 6-1. The Giants move four ahead of Atlanta in the National West. Philadelphia 9-3. St. Louis leads in the ninth. Giants win and San Diego on 11. It's been hard to beat the Tigers this spring. Sometimes you have to make plays like this one by Robin Yount to even have a chance. Oh, that's a dandy. Then again, the Tigers played one upsmanship on Yount. Watch Tony Phillips all the way to the shortstop side of the bag to make the play. And when all was said and done, and Phillips doubled in a couple of runs, Detroit had won again, 6-2, to two, and the lights blew out. 6-2 Detroit, Toronto over Boston, 4-3, 3-1 Cleveland over the Orioles. Kansas City leads in the eighth, and Seattle beat Texas. The lights are blown out in here. Our four directors on the floor. I've, oh my! I'm leaving a trail down that there. That was that was just your light, Chris. We we don't need it anymore. I'm out of here. There's more Cheers excitement coming up, so please stick around. We'll take a quick look back at Cheers, very quick. And don't forget to stay tuned for Jay Leno and the Tonight Show immediately following Newswatch 8, live from Boston with the Taking cast of Cheers. Taking your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? So what is one AC well, going to be like? By tomorrow? our standards, it'll be cool for the next two or three mornings, close to 60 degrees. A little higher than that tomorrow, and the next ni night, a little lower. Okay, thanks, Dave. And finally, let's say cheerio to cheers with a fitting tribute. We asked the fastest talking man in the world, John Moshita from the Federal Express commercials, to look back on cheers, all 11 seasons of it. So now, here's a quick look, a very quick look. Oh, I can remember just about every episode. As a matter of fact, right in the beginning, there was that one... There was the episode where Diane took a job at Cheers after being jilted by a fiancé, and that set up the whole season of Sam versus Diane. Will they have a romance? Will they have a romance? Everyone was kept guessing. Meanwhile, Carla was pregnant with a fifth time with her ex-husband, Nick, and Sam and the coach battled it out for the same woman. Sam's brother tried to steal Diane away from Cheers, but she decided to stay, and in the second season, the romance between Sam and Diane began. Carla had the baby, Nick married Loretta, Norma and Vera got separated and then back together, and Cliff fell for Carla's nympho sister. In the third season, Diane dumped Sam for Frazier, but became allergic to him, and Carla got pregnant again. Coach's fiancé dumped her when she won the lottery, and Sam tried to get Diane back. Year four, Sam and Diane are back in that on-again, off-again kind of situation, but at the end of the season, Sam proposed to a woman who was a mystery woman, and in the fifth season, that mystery woman turned out to be Diane. Fraser moved in with Lilith, Woody fell for Sam's goddaughter, Carla dated a hockey player, and Sam and Diane got engaged, but called it off. Sam sold cheers in season six, but returned to work for Rebecca. Meanwhile, Carla was pregnant again, this time with twins. Year seven, Rebecca was fired and rehired, and Carla thought Eddie was cheating, Sam thought he was a father, Woody dated a socialite, and Lilith got pregnant. In season eight, Sam and Rebecca finally kissed, Lilith gave birth in the cab, Cliff got engaged, Rebecca and Robin did it, Eddie got ice, and Cliff put his life in jeopardy. Woody got a roommate in season nine, Rebecca jilted Robin at the altar, and Sam decided he wanted a kid with Rebecca. Carla betted John Allen Hill in year ten, while Woody and Kelly got hits, Lilith found out about Fraser's first wife, and Rebecca's old flame told her he was gay. So far, this season, Rebecca burnt down the bar, Norm got a beer taste drop, Little left Fraser, Fraser found Rebecca, and Cliff was convinced Hitler lived next door. <gasps> and that pretty well covers it. Right. Sums it up, I think. Cheers to the Cheers gang. We'll certainly miss them. But of course, we can always watch them on reruns, playing on a TV station in your neighborhood real soon. Thank you for getting your news from us tonight. Cheers, everybody. See you tomorrow. Good night.